Hi there, Robin here from Expert Island, and today we've got a brand new mixer from Gemini. They've been out of the mixer game for a while, and now they're back. They've been making controllers, speakers, all kinds of stuff, but not a mixer. Now they have a mixer, 12 channel, eight channel, and I think a four channel as well. We've got two out of the three models here in the showroom. Today we're gonna to be talking about the GEM, the GEM uh, 12 channel a USB. Now that also features, and this is why it's really here, Bluetooth. This guy has Bluetooth on the actual unit. With the Bluetooth function, we're gonna be able to wirelessly connect to the mixer from our phone, our tablet, uh, our television, anything you can possibly wanna connect via Bluetooth to the mixer, which is why it's here. Um, we've been asking for it, they built it, I've got it here, and I gotta say, it's a pretty good mixer. So we're gonna do a top-down view of the whole thing, I've taken the time, I've read the instruction manual, we've covered all the features to make sure we actually understand how it works, what we like and dislike about it, and that's what's gonna be on today's video. So remember, if you're looking for more details on this or any other products, please look down below. We always have links to both our website and to our Amazon affiliate page. Uh, and don't forget, if you don't hang around to the end of the video, you can always subscribe, watch it later, hit that bell, do all that kind of fun stuff. All right, so here is Gemini's new mixer. Now you gotta understand, Gemini's been around since like 1974, 1976, so they've been doing this for a while. They stopped doing mixers, I don't know when. Uh, you still find some old mixers found on YouTube, but they've just come out with a new line. Three models, similar in nature when it comes to the overall package and series of products, but they do have difference when it comes to number of mic input jacks, total, uh, channels, that sort of thing. But what we're gonna do today is we're gonna run through all the features, everything we see on the mixer, and what's important about this mixer. There are other mixers like it, of course, but they are starting to look at some of the new features people want. I mean, they, they claim to be a company who listens to their customers, and I think they absolutely do. We talked to them about mixers not too long ago, and here we are with a new mixer to talk about. Uh, and some of the features we wanted right here Bluetooth, that's what makes this so important. Now, standard setup for a nice portable mixer, uh, you're gonna have your three pin XLR at the top, and then you're gonna have a quarter inch line input along with a gain, which is gonna go from 20 to 60 dB range. And then we're gonna follow that with a low cut, which I think their units are set at 75 Hertz, maybe 80, but I think it's 75. And then we're gonna have a high, mid, low control. So our three band EQ per channel on the first four uh, right here. Then we're gonna have a little light that indicates peak, which is real important to have. Next knob is going to be for the effects. So it allows us to decide how much effects we want on this channel versus all the other channels, and then blend it in at the end using the actual effects selector with the uh, DSP selections and with the uh, EFF send and EFF to main. Now. Uh, I did have to play around with this a little bit to get the balance out, but I did figure it out. We'll talk about that in a little bit. Then we have a pan, which is also a very nice feature. It allows us to pan the actual channels or balance it. So they actually took time to get it right. So on the stereo inputs over here with all the line inputs, they're all gonna be balanced over here because it's a single uh, actual channel going to this line. Uh, we have a pan option. So we can move the sound to the left or to the right without losing any, there we go. Down here we have our levels. So now we can adjust this unit against all the other lines going into the unit so we can come out the main on the back side. So that's gonna cover the first four. Uh, the, the, the feel of the buttons, I'll be honest, I feel like pretty much everybody else. Uh, it's pretty straightforward. The only knob that I'm not a super fan of, but you're not gonna touch it a lot, is this one over here. The gain knob appears to be recessed. They could have probably have used a longer knob here, just a little bit to make this easier to work because my fingers do bang into the quarter inch on top. But outside of that, overall, exactly what I'm looking for down the line. Uh, again, the peaks are important because without the peaks on here, we're not going to find, if we have a, a hot line, if I go up to Unity here and I'm clipping, uh, if I didn't have peaks on all of these, I would have a hard time finding which channel is the one that I need to adjust. So again, nice to have the peaks on the first four channels at least. Then we move over here. Now, what we've got is groupings. Because this is a 12 channel mixer, uh, they're gonna group five and six here. Then they're gonna group seven and eight here, nine and 10, 11 and 12. They do offer us 
the ability to drop it by 10 dBs by pressing these buttons here. And they do also give us the option to dial in effects on that particular input. And now we have balance control along with the burgundy knobs, which are your level controls. So that repeats itself all the way through. That covers us all the way up to here. So we've covered all of these guys and all of these guys. On top, we do have an EFF, so the effects send, which is also connected to this knob here, which is the effects send. Then we have our phono jack for our headphones, which is connected to this knob here. Then we have our control room on both outputs here, which is also part of this. So I'm usually either gonna take my headphones or I'm gonna take my control room. Uh, control room's another option if you're looking for an alternative for a subwoofer output, if you plan on having this being used just to play music on, because a lot of people are buying this uh, for karaoke or for the rec room or anything like that because it has the Bluetooth feature here. With that, I can decide to plug my subwoofer here and I can plug my main speakers here. So that brings us down to this side. Yes, that's our main left and right, which is controlled by this main output here. We also have a two track in and a record out. Um, I'll be honest, this is kind of redundant today in the industry. Uh, maybe if this had USB two channel out, two channel in probably would have been a, a neater little add on. Uh, I know they can do that because they can incorporate it now through that USB slot there. Uh, so that's an option. But again, for the price point of this unit, uh, it does offer more than the uh, Mackie uh, Mix 12, for example, FX. The Mix 12 FX laid out exactly the same. Uh, I think one or two knobs are different at the most. Uh, their unit's slightly larger, but it's exactly mapped out the same way. Everything's pretty much identical when it comes to the, uh, the send, the headphones, the control room, all 12 channels. Everything is there exactly the same. This has Bluetooth though, right here, which is really easy to use. Pull out your phone, your tablet, uh, if your computer, or if you are gonna use uh, it for karaoke or you're looking for a mixer for karaoke, have a look at your TV. If it has Bluetooth on it, you can now wirelessly connect straight to this mixer from your TV, play YouTube on your TV, do your karaoke from your TV, and it'll play right into this unit. Now, the only one thing they did miss on this has nothing to do with functionality, but noting, no, there's no notation on channel 11 and 12. I had to figure that out. This actual Bluetooth function, an MP3 function, is controlled by 11 and 12 down here. So this knob controls this Bluetooth. Uh, so it's just one of those things you kind of need to know where you need to read the instruction manual to figure out where this is connected to, but it's, it's right there. Talking about karaoke or anything else like that, then you have uh, 16 effects. One of them is voice cancellation, but like I've said before, the problem with voice cancellation is somebody in some studio somewhere decided exactly what frequency or what pitch somebody sings at, and that's what they're trying to work. I did test it out. Uh, a couple of songs were okay. Most songs, like most voice cancellation systems, if you don't have a mid-range gain for that, it really doesn't work. So, But they do have tons and tons of effects all the way down. You just turn the knob, select the one you like to have. Yes, they did label them like Hall 1, Hall 2, Room 1, Room 2, Room 3, uh, Plate. So it goes on and on and on, delay and all that kind of stuff. It's all listed right here. And you just basically turn the knob to select it. Now, I did find that you do have to control how much the effect send is uh, versus the effects to main is. Uh, in my case, if you are trying to just, you know, get this to work and get it going right away, make sure to turn your effects up at least a half on any of the channels you plan on using. And uh, then basically take the EFF send, which is the top knob, put it at 25%, and then take the EFF to main and set it at 75%. You can then, once you have that actually working, you can then play around with this and decide exactly what you'd like to have. Uh, it does have phantom power, so if you are gonna plug in a condenser style microphone, you just engage that and phantom power light up. It makes all these mics hot, don't worry about it. If you have condenser or, or dynamic mics and this is on, no problem. If you're not using condenser mic, might as well have it off. Uh, so this way it's not adding any background noise, which is so minuscule, but it is compounded. You are adding it up, so you might as well not have it if you don't need it. So then down here, we have three buttons, which are option buttons. And it's basically, what do I want to do with, in this case, uh, our two track? So we want to send our two track into the mix. Do I want to send it to the control room? 
uh, do I want a, uh, FX to go to the control room or not? So do I want these guys to go here? So if I was planning on using this for the subwoofer, you'd have to make a choice. Do I want to have effects on my sub or no effects on my sub? I tend to not want effects on my sub in an actual regular size room, uh, simply because it kind of throws everything off. It's nice because I can have my effects coming out my mains, but not out of the actual control room, because really you don't need that many. If you're singing with effects on, you don't really need them up here. There we go. So the final question is, well, do I like it? And the answer is yes, I do. Uh, I'll, I'll tolerate the, the shorter knob on the gain control, uh, just simply for the fact that I really like the Bluetooth option. I like the fact that I have a control room, headphone control separate from my main output. Uh, so this way a lot of people will find good use for that. Um, we've got ourselves our XLRs, we've got all the quarter inch, we've got tons of inputs. Uh, I don't, you know, I'm not here or there when it comes to having, you know, RCA in and out. Never use this for anything. So if you have something that requires uh, RCA inputs on it, uh, use the adapters. So find yourself a couple of these guys here, which are basically quarter inch unbalanced to RCA. They're, they should always be sold this way. Uh, and that's going to easily plug into the channels you want. And that's the proper way to plug something in. So if you need to plug in a TV or a Blu-ray player, or any type of equipment that still uses RCA, maybe you have a uh, uh, a controller and you want to plug your controller into here but your controller only has RCA plugs do not plug them in here plug them in over here uh, that's way you're gonna get full function uh, if you have something that you have that requires a line input or RCA's but you do want to have the three band EQ control you can certainly plug some mics up here plug these guys in here instead now you'll have gain control so you'll be able to hook up these guys just the way you want throw one of the pans to the left, one to the right. Now you have a true stereo signal coming into here, which will come straight out the back end. So that's all you really have to do if you want to have some good EQ control. So that still leaves you two mic open here. Uh, so you can do a lot of choices with it. Again, yes, I do like it. I do like it because it has Bluetooth on it. There are other mixers that are virtually identical to this in the same price point, but this one has Bluetooth and the Bluetooth works really well. Uh, so yes, you can buy a machine like this. You can also buy the Mackie uh, Mix 12 FX, but remember that one there, all the same functionality, but no Bluetooth. So if I'm gonna spend my money, I'll probably buy this. So there you go. That pretty much covers it for this mixer today. Uh, if you got any questions or comments, leave them down below. Uh, if you haven't subscribed, now's always a good time. If you have, I wanna say thank you very much. And uh, for sure, we'll see you on the next video. There'll also be links for this. Don't forget, there's always links for this for our website down at the bottom and also for our amazon.com affiliate page. So if you're in the States, for sure, by all means use the .com, you'll find it there and you'll get updated on the right price. Thanks again for watching and we'll see you on the next video.